What is up, everyone? Thank you for checking in. This is page 390, and we are continuing the conversation on what sort of shortcuts we get to use to prove that triangles are congruent. And we're specifically focused on right triangles. Major foreshadowing, if you're paying attention in English class, you know that something huge is coming, and this is the portents of that story. Uh, we're gonna talk about right triangles for the rest of the year. Now to get ready for that one, we need to make sure that you understand why those triangles matter and why they are congruent. This is directly related as well to the learning target. Let's flip back to page 385. We're gonna use side angle side. Here, get out of the way, me. We're gonna use side angle side, uh, angle side angle, side angle side, and then angle angle side, triangle congruence theorems to justify the leg leg congruence theorem and the leg angle congruence theorem. We've already justified the hypotenuse leg congruence theorem. And if you haven't watched that video, that's activity one, previous couple of videos here, please do so. Now, let's actually read what those congruence theorems are supposed to say, and of course, highlight what math mathematicians do. We're reasoning abstractly and quantitatively. We're constructing viable arguments and critiquing the reasoning of others. You have learned about the hypotenuse angle congruence theorem and the hypotenuse leg congruence theorem. They should be note cards that you've already created, right? Uh, there are two other right triangle theorems that you can use to prove. They have very similar reasoning. The first one says leg leg congruence theorem, or LL for short, right? We have SAS for short, so here's LL. If two corresponding shorter legs of right triangles are congruent, then the two triangles are congruent. I'll show you the picture in a second. And then the leg angle congruence theorem, if the leg and an acute angle of one right triangle are congruent to the corresponding leg and acute angle of another right triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. In this page, I'm gonna do less writing and more explaining. You need to synthesize what I'm saying in the video and you need to put it down here. But I'm gonna show you on the note cards. So, well that'd be the other thing, instead of maybe writing on this page, you show me the note cards you made for this page similar to what I've already created. Explain how the LL, leg leg, congruence theorem and the LA, not Los Angeles, leg angle, ooh, that's close, angle, okay. Uh, congruence theorem are each equivalent to another triangle congruence theorem that you know. There were the four that I mentioned in the learning goals, right? Well, let me take you to the end of the book. And as the, you know, as a good math bat mathematics book should do, we should have these uh, glossary sections or things in the back of the book. So this is actually page G42. Put that up here, G-42. On page G42, I highlighted two congruence theorems that we're gonna need for leg-leg triangle congruence and leg-angle triangle congruence. Let's read what angle side angle has to say. In angle side angle, if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding two angles and the inc so it included, it's got to be on the inside uh, of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So let's tackle this one. I'm going to highlight. I've used uh, green, pink, and orange. I'm only going to use green and orange for this one. So sorry if there is some apparent overlap, but it also fits with the motif of what I've been doing in the other problems. Okay, is that visible there? Maybe if I push my video over to here. Okay, and if you get stuck, I'll hint, these two are coming up in the next module. They've already been teased a little bit from the previous couple of lessons. So know that G42 is a very good page to even like dog ear and set aside so you can come back to it. If the two corresponding shorter legs of the right triangles are congruent, then the two triangles are congruent. Uh, well, angle side angle says this. They have an angle that match. So the right angles match. And we're also given uh, that the legs match. I would not have done it the way that they said to do that. I'm going to show you another one in the book for this one, right? So I'm going to, first of all, maybe like I'm kind of calling an audible in the middle of the video and one take, LeBrant, let's go. I'm gonna flip forward, if you don't mind. Flip forward, follow along to page G45. And here's why. I think this is actually a stronger proof, okay? So we have side angle side congruence. It deserves a highlight. 
If two sides in the included angle of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding sides in the included angle of the second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. And then the one below that, if two, way below that actually, right down here, if three sides of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. These two statements are what matter. Now, we could probably use any of them, but I'm going to really focus on SAS. Okay, SAS. So that's the thing. I need to find matching legs, you know, things that actually line up and match. So the bottom edge, BC and B, uh, FD, those two match because if the two corresponding shorter legs are congruent, let's call attention to them with some highlight. And then AC and ED. Those are the two legs. This is exactly the scenario set up for SAS. The angle is the 90 degree angle right here. This 90 degree angle is between the two legs, the two sides of the triangle. That's what included means. It's the angle in between the two sides that we know. So honestly, legitimately, this picture right here is exactly SAS. The side that matches its corresponding side and the uh, leg and the leg that matches its other corresponding leg and the other triangle and the included right angle in between. Therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EFD by side angle side. And that justifies that if you have a right triangle where two legs are known, because it's a right triangle and those legs meet at the right angle, the two triangles are congruent. Let's take a look at the other one, the LA proof. LA, the leg angle triangle congruence theorem. And uh, I think I'm going to use angle, angle side. But let's just take a look from in here. OK, so what we have for congruence in our triangles are these things. I'm going to bring in a yellow highlighter as well. Yellow and uh, orange. OK, I'm going to arbitrarily, it doesn't matter. Is that what that means? I'm going to arbitrarily highlight angle B. And it's corresponding angle, arbitrarily highlighting, but matching, right? And the other triangle would be F. So highlight both of those. And then I'm going to bring in some orange because I've been consistently using orange. And this is an angle, angle side congruence shortcut proof. I'm going to highlight AC, orange, like I've been highlighting in the other ones, and highlight ED, orange, as well. Now, this is why it's angle, angle side. And maybe you're already seeing it. Maybe pause the video here and think it out before I say it, and then resume the video when you're ready. Angles, the right angles, C and D, they match. All right angles are congruent. That is what the right angle congruence postulate says. Angle B and angle F, they have to match because we need two things that match. We need an angle, an angle from LA. We need an angle that's not the right angle. It's away from the right angle. So we actually need hidden, it's not mentioned. We need two angles to be known, angle and an angle. The thing is, the leg does not have to be between the two sides, between the two angles, I mean. This is the non-included side. So we have to know these angles, or we could know these ones instead. We could kind of flip it around and know the other angles too. But you got to know two angles, and the side does not have to be between them. If it did, fine. ASA. But if the side, the leg, is not between the two angles, that's the 90 and the other corner, then it's AAS. But for that scenario, those two situations, it's enough for us to therefore justify triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EFD, and therefore they are the same. What I'm going to ask you to do is take both of these cards, this one and then, where'd my other one go? Here we go. Both of these cards and just write up what were the two shortcut reasons you need to put that down on page 390 and show me for evidence of, of thought and thinking. Maybe make a note card as well along the way. Thank you for watching this video. More to follow. We are continuing our journey into using the theorems, improving statements. I'll see you in the next video. Like, comment, and subscribe.